Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web. No, this is not Halloween. This is our project today, an illuminated house number. Yes, this is our project, the illuminated house number box. And it's pretty easy project. It's basically just a little box, but you know what? We used some solar lights from uh, the, the little garden lights that you can get. We just took the solar lights out of them so they come on automatically at night. They recharge every day and it illuminates your house number. Okay, let's get started with this cool little build. Now, the first thing you're going to need to get started is some of these little solar lights. Now, I've selected some small ones, so I'm going to use three of them. And the tops of these normally just come off like that. They just twist off, unscrew, uh, and that's so that you can change the batteries in here. And you can see that that little light is coming on, I think, and that's going to be, that's going to be the, the light inside, of course. So, you need, in this case I'm using three of them because they're a little bit low powered. I'm also going to be using some plexiglass in the front. We're going to be cutting that on the table saw. The other thing you're going to need, of course, is some wood, and I'm using fir, so you're going to have to determine what kind of wood you use. If yours is going to be exposed to the weather outside, you might want to use cedar. It'll last a little bit longer, or teak, or another one of those outside woods. And the other thing you're going to need is a template of some letters, because we're going to be cutting the letters out, of course, on our little um, scroll saw. I've measured my numbers, and I've determined how long the little box needs to be. And I'm going to make my top overhang a little bit on either end just to help uh, repel the rain a little bit more. So I'm going to cut mine at 13 inches long uh, or about 33 millimeters. The back will need to be a little bit narrower at 12 inches or 30 and a half millimeters. I'm going to cut the plexiglass now and there are special plexiglass cutting blades uh, but I'm just using an 80 tooth uh, cross cut blade and it seems to work Plexiglass is a little bit too wide, so I'm going to trim it down to four and three quarters or about 12 millimeters. Now, because the top is going to be sitting at a little bit of an angle, what I want to do now is I want to take this edge off uh, and I've measured the degrees and I've set the table saw and the, the amount that I'm going to cut off, I set the blade to 18 degrees. Now I also need to set the sides of our little box at 18 degrees, so I've set the sliding miter at 18 degrees. We have all of our components for the box. There's the sides and the back and the top. You'll notice there's a nasty knot here, but it, it's, it's a tight knot, and we're going to be painting it white anyway, so it isn't going to matter. Uh, and there's the top, and of course there's the plexiglass that we will eventually be putting on the front. But what we need to do right now is we need to drill holes because we want to mount the three lights in the top, and we're going to use this number because what we really want to do is we really want to center those lights over top of each number. 
So that's what I'm going to do. Worked right. out, I've worked out the spacing for the holes on the top and I've actually drawn around them so now I'm going to use the scroll saw to cut around them. Now it's time to cut the numbers out and I took one of the sheets that I printed off on my printer and I've got a good quality piece of, of thin plywood here and all I'm going to do is I'm going to use this spray adhesive and I'm going to spray this, let the wood sit for a few minutes, then I'll just put this on top of it and smooth it down and I'll be able to use, I'll be able to cut this right through the paper and cut those letters so this will actually be my template. Well let's see if I can do a better job on the numbers than I did on the circles. I'll use my random orbital sander now to clean up the holes on the top and to touch up the numbers because I'm just not really good at scroll sawing so I'm going to have to touch them up just a little bit. I decided to attach the top with pocket screws so I'm just going to go now and drill a few holes in the side and in the top. So we're ready for some assembly of the box. I'm just going to drill a couple of pilot holes in the back. And for the top, we'll put in some of these outdoor Craig screws. Now while the paint's drying, I'm going to put the numbers on and I'm going to drill a couple of holes so that we can mount that in the front of our box. Now there's the first page that I printed out and I'm just using it to help me align and position the numbers and I'm using this uh, 3M outdoor double-sided tape. This stuff is great. This is what they use to put molding on the side of cars so it's a really good tape and you don't need very much of it and that way I can use this and line that up there we go
Okay, we've got the box all finished. We've got the numbers mounted. All we have to do now is to put the little lights in top. That's a little bit snug with a little bit of paint that's in there. That looks good. And we'll silicone these in and they'll be good. And I even have some black silicone from another project. That concludes our little project on making an illuminated house number box. And if your house is hard to find, hard to, hard to read the numbers at, at night, that might be something that you want to do because if you're an emergency worker, a police, fire, ambulance, those sorts of things, even if they're not coming to your house, uh, they may be coming across the street or down the street, at least they'll be able to see uh, the vicinity that, are, that you're in. So you might even save lives with a little project like that. So, I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and stay tuned for our next build.